Welcome to episode two of the Build Back Better podcast. My name is Emily and I am a law clerk at Helix Legal. Obviously, I am not Janelle Karisk, who Michael refers to later on. In this episode, Michael speaks to Rad Miller Desik. Rad is a carpenter by trade. She has spent many years volunteering for NARWIC the National Association of Women in Construction and speaks to Michael about the importance and benefits which flow from encouraging more diversity and women on site, the initiatives currently in place to tackle this issue and her personal journey through the construction industry. We hope that you enjoy this episode and happy listening. So, Rad, after the wonderful words of of Janelle, um, I just get this conversation going. uh, Sure. Going. So, just as a a background, can you just give a a brief outline of your experience in the industry over the years and then we'll uh, settle into some uh, some specifics. Sure. So I started as a carpenter joiner, as you know, and um, I worked on the tools for a few years after finishing my apprenticeship. Um, even right from the start of being an apprentice, I was often invited to um, participate in programs like Tradeswomen on the Move, Wider Opportunities for Women, which were both Queensland government, um, state government initiatives, um, just in terms of talking and promoting careers to women. Um, Once I started to have my own family, because both my husband and I are in the industry, I came off the tools. we probably would have preferred to do it the other way. Um, he doesn't have a, 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 a natural love for being on the tools, whereas I absolutely love it and still any chance I get, um, you know, do some work around the house or help friends out and do that sort of thing. Um, further to that, I got involved with the apprenticeship side of things and training packages and so doing sort of that background work around the apprenticeship but always involved in um, looking at promoting the industry to women, looking at promoting women to the industry and making them understand that these could be employees of choice um, and um, just developing through that pathway my own career path that has really been built on the back of my advocacy work it's it's what gets me attention out there in terms of um, from the right people um, getting noticed getting asked questions definitely it's how I've built my career do you think that a young rad starting now is as as much changed um I I feel in the last few years that there has been a shift I think a, a young rad would be definitely um you know would get a, a oh, rad would get a chance no matter what to be <laughs> honest but um I think sure. in terms of my own behavior I, I probably wouldn't have be the same person on on site when I was on site 20 to 30 years ago I emulated the men like most people wouldn't have even recognized me as a a woman and that's a lesson I've learned I'd I'd certainly walk in there um, more proud of and and allow people to know that I am a woman and and what I bring to the table is as valuable if I bring it to the table as a woman not as a woman Mm. replicating a man so you felt the pressure in those days to 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 fold into the, to the to the men's men's way, so to speak. Absolutely, but on some occasions it was a bit more. It mm. was detrimental too because you become quite aggressive yourself. Mm. You um, you know use language uh, that, and then they look at you like there's something wrong with you again because you're 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 too much of a man, you mm. know, and and then you get other stigmas thrown your way. So just on that, and I know we were just having a chat to to before, you were just telling me about an, an issue that you, through the Department of Public Works and Housing, Housing Public Works, or I forget the, <laughs> how, how often it's jigged around, where it's, it's, it's basically uh, an initiative around getting uh, women to complete some housing projects. Is that is that a summary of it? And it's, is there any sort of findings or anything that you're learning from that which sort of reflects the fact that... Um, the women on working on those projects side by side with the men, there's a, there's there's 
there's benefits for both. Yeah. So in terms of the initiative, it is the exemplar project un- under um, the, the previous uh, public and house. <laughs> Housing and Public yeah, Works whatever. portfolio. <laughs> um, and yes, so the, there was a desired target of 30%, um, but a, a minimal target of 11% to try and measure what, what can be done. And whilst we're still um, collating that data, some of the antidotal things that we are seeing is that the, the men on that site are disappointed when they have to leave they're actually saying a lot of things like this is the best site culture that they've ever worked in they're a lot more relaxed they're happy to come to work um, there's a different feel on that site I've personally felt it as someone who's been on quite a few sites when you walk in there's a there's a lot of smiling and and Mm. happiness but the other thing that's been quite um not necessarily surprising to some of us who've been advocating in this space, but there's um, we have some proven data around safety. It's one of the the the, the safety um, aspect or incidents on site have are significantly reduced. There's a lot of care, not just from um, a working perspective, but also from um, you know looking after each other on site and making sure that everyone is safe on site. So it's a more of a collaboration. Absolutely. And it's, it's a collaboration where um, the men are prompted to reflect on or behave in a certain what, less aggressive way that, that would be the typical way that happens on on building sites. Yeah, there's a nurturing yeah. feeling um, in terms of, and that's something that, that is a strength um, in women. We nurture and make sure that everyone's okay around us all, all the time and, and that's replicated then by the guys on that site. They're looking after each other. They're looking after the the other um, the women on site. It's been amazing. It's <laughs> truly a great feeling when you go there. It's, it shouldn't be a surprise to anybody when you think in terms of some of the the uh, information that's come through from when you see uh, businesses with very diverse boards or you know, boards with 50% women representation, um, there's there's enough evidence out there that shows that <laughs> that they perform very those those organisations perform very well. So it's it's like it's to me it's always like a jigsaw. It's like you know why why would you want to put the jigsaw together yeah. rather than just have the same pieces all the time trying to. You know, make it all fit. Yeah, totally agree. Yes, that, that, that's fantastic. So, okay, so back to your your, your own sort of journey. Um, where 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 are you focused now? What are you sort of specifically zeroing in, in on now in terms of your your working commitments? So, in terms of um, what I'm trying to do in this advocacy space and and I'm not certainly not doing it alone I um, volunteer for the National Association of Women in Construction but some of the key priorities for us is now looking at how we can support the men in in, in industry to help um, give them some skills and and um, tools if you like to help them with dealing with a diverse workforce because that's not something that they've experienced as we do see that step up it is very slow for me but as we do see that increase their environment is changing and we need to provide them with some support we we, we have now we could self has a mentoring program any organization out there the apprenticeship centers have uh, mentoring programs everyone focuses on the minority group but I know um, from my years of experience that if a woman puts a hand up to um, come into the building and construction industry wants to do a trade she genuinely wants to be there and she will go the extra mile will work really hard and and will build the resilience to deal with the issues but the guys don't get that they don't get to have a conversation with someone about how to deal with the, someone crying on site they wouldn't have seen that before yeah they might have seen someone um and maybe i'm being too stereotypical but kick something or punch a hole get a bit angry or aggressive but they may not have seen someone crying how do they deal with that situation mm-hmm. um the other really huge issue still for women as primary caregivers is is that responsibility mm-hmm. and this um industry being 
so inflexible in terms of start times and, and that sort of thing. And pre-COVID, you constantly heard that, you know, we can't do this, we can't allow, you know, this working from home and all of this stuff. And then overnight we yeah, could. It's amazing, so to it? me it's like if, if we have this major problem that's a barrier for these careers for women, why can't we just come up with a solution because we certainly could if if you know something happened that you know drastically reduced the men in the industry how how do you solve that problem if you've not trained a workforce 50 percent of the workforce to do the work one of my earliest memories of is is being told stories about by my grandmother so she was a war widow yes. and uh, my grandfather i never met was off in the war and the rats at a book for five years, she worked, had to go and work in the munitions factory. So, because all the women had, had to go and do what was then traditionally yes. the male, and Australia flourished in terms of <laughs> in terms of that. One of the one of my earliest memories of her was the resentment that she carried so strongly when she was, to use her words, kicked back to the kitchen yes. Yes. when the men came back. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not as if. Yeah, you know, to me, it's always a, this this conversation we're having, and we'll talk about the broader conversation about women in uh, society at the moment. It, it, there's been so much evidence out there for so long, <laughs> um, and it's it's so counterproductive, not just to the women, but it's so counterproductive to the welfare of the men and yes. and, and the society that we live in. It just it just does my head in. Yes. Yeah, and again, I fully support that. I, having been in the building and construction industry for most of my working life, I have seen a lot of males miss out on some very major milestones with their families and their, their children, my husband included in that, um, having an office-based job for you know most of the, um, the time in recent years. I've been the one who gets to go to the award ceremonies, mm-hmm. to the sporting mm-hmm. events, to see our kids um, at their absolute best, mm. he hasn't experienced that. So even for them, it's it's, it's not. It's, it's amazing that you've, and this is probably I don't know if this is a this is if this is a a female sort of characteristic, but 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 you've just touched on empathy. You know, you've touched on empathy for the males in terms of trying to get them to take them on this journey. Whereas I'm not too sure lots of men have. <laughs> well, we're seeing that play out <laughs> in politics at the moment. I would suggest, um, and that's why we're angry. You know, everyone looks at us, and you know, myself, I have been been accused of being um, a woman in construction Nazi. I've been called really nasty names. I've I've had um, really feral conversations. Um, because I've been doing this work, whereas the whole time it's not just been about me. It's not that I want to – I've done it. I've been there. I've, do, I've gotten a trade. I want to see that my daughter or your mm-hmm. daughter or someone mm-hmm. else's who wants to come into the industry gets a chance, and I want to see the men in the industry um, experience a, a workplace that's safer for them and, and happier for them. You know, I, I certainly would love to see, you know, my husband come home not – angry about a, a, an argument that, that's gotten out of hand on site because people don't know how to speak to each other. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's important. Yeah, you know, my background is you know, 22 before working for coming to work with Janelle Hill several years ago. I was 22 years with the industry regulator, um, BSA, QBC. So um, it was obviously reflective of what, the industry was like it was male dominated, mm-hmm. particularly in the early early stages. Uh, our executive up until our executive at one stage only had one woman mm-hmm. on it. Uh, our executive team, um, and um, you know, I, I, I just think back to the angst and the anxiety that I would go home with regularly yeah. as a result of continually trying to deal with men issues through the, through the prism of men. Yes. Yeah. It's, 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 and to me, it's one of the great things of coming to work here is that it's 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 a it's a collaboration. It's, yes. It's and so I've never I've never been able to understand why 
uh, even if you're not empathetic, you know, it's like sometimes <laughs> outcomes are achieved through not maybe the best means, um, but, but, but something clicks. Yeah. Uh, from an economic perspective, from a, from a business perspective, there's just so much out there that yeah. just says if, you, if there's genuine collaboration, if there's genuine respect, those businesses do the best. Yes, yes. And it's the same for you know, the regulator. I know the regulator is much more representative these days in terms of uh, female participation in key in key uh, in key positions. Um, so, okay. So, you, you, I know your your Narwick passion. <laughs> <laughs> And Janelle said, uh, I'll just use her words, turn the Art Week Awards into the premier event for construction. 50 people to what it is today due to the hard work done to convince major companies to take sponsorship. So was it really that hard? I know, was it, was it, was it hard to attract sponsorship? I just can't believe. Yeah, um, in the early days, absolutely. I think even... Um, it depends too on how the industry going. is going. So, like anything, the first thing that goes when you have that downturn Sorry. in industry is awards or special programs. That, um, you know, any of that sort of stuff is trimming the fat. And then when they come into a peak again, then they're scrambling to to find. Um, some of these things what what we did was look at how it um, supports those organizations with their tenders if they're participating in NAWIC not just via sponsorship but um, sending the, the the women through to some of the PD sessions and um, hosting workshops and things that could help them so it, was, it, it wasn't easy um, I do have some um, stories that you know, are somewhat regrettable in terms of the conversations that I might have had with some of the CEOs. Um, but look, at the at the end of the day, once we hosted these gala events and, and the, again, the feel of the room is completely different. So I've been to a lot of industry association um, dinners, as you might have if you were in the regulator, and they can be very, our, our events were very upbeat. It was very much girls just want to have fun. And, um, and, and yeah, the, we, we put on a show. We didn't pass on an award after an award. We put on a show. We entertained the sponsors. We, we looked after them. And I think, um, you know, it's, again, using our strengths as hostesses and um, things that we do do best. And I think that was part of the, the winning success. And I, I was also very cheeky often at the end of an award. So I'd say, you know, to to say maybe Ellen Lee, so, well, you know, Lang O'Rourke gave us this much. Can you so, beat it? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know, men like a challenge and like to win, so we played on those cards at times too. It's, um, yeah, I've been to a couple of the, the Narwick stuff and it's, it's a completely different field <laughs> to, to the endless um, awards of um, some of the other, uh, and I'm not denigrating, it, 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 every award night is, is a reflection of, 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 of um, you know, rejoicing or, you know, yes. celebrating the industry. So, um, but... Um, yeah, the Narwick Awards are different to the, to the other ones. I, I take your point. Um, the the thing about the sort of the way, and I follow Narwick closely, obviously, and because of Janelle's past involvement as well. Um, the messaging that comes through from Narwick is just so much more direct in terms of that celebratory nature. You know yes. what I mean? It's it's it's. I know it's an overarching organisation, so it's not as if you, you know, you're looking after. You know, there's there's no jealousy there in terms of mm. companies being a bit guarded about saying it. But um, some of the stuff that I'm seeing from now, and some of the stuff I'm seeing recently from the Queensland Law Society, in terms of its promoting of women and, and, and looking to do better for women, um, really gives me some hope that 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 even if there's resistance in in within individual companies, it's, it's almost like culturally things are changing so quickly around yes. uh, around some of these businesses that whether or not they're going to willingly embrace it, um, they're going to have to. <laughs> this is true. Um, we are looking, one of our... Um 
activities is to lobby the Queensland government here um, to look at putting a target on government funded job sites and and I and I know we're having this discussion at the moment in terms of the federal government as well around um, the those quotas and and things and I must admit for the first probably 15 years of my advocacy work I was against them I felt that um, you know if you can do the job you'll get the job um, and, that, and that was my thought but in everything that I've done I can honestly hand on heart say industry is a blockage they are not hiring women on merit and this particular industry has um, has a tradition of nepotism if you have a father or a uncle or a mate um, in the industry he'll pull your son into the industry get get him a job that's not happening for women um, and if you tell me that Every man in the industry is there on merit. <laughs> I call BS in, the, in, in my very old... <laughs> it's major BS because we know, we know for a fact that often young boys who are disengaged from school are told to go get a trade because they failed everything else. And that's not fair to those kids either because yeah. they don't necessarily want to be doing that, that work. They may, you know, if we could help direct whatever passion they have into an area where, where they want to be, we would see it. But certainly from that aspect and, and having come from supporting unemployed youth into, into jobs, um, um, working in the apprenticeship sector, I have seen more than my fair share of young men who don't belong in the industry in the industry. So please don't tell me it's about merit because there's no merit to it. When I have women contact me via Facebook, via work, via other networks, telling me that they've applied for over 100 apprenticeship jobs and they can't get them in, in non-traditional trades, you can't tell me that a woman who has applied over a hundred times doesn't have merit in getting there. The other thing we also have is an an unfair disadvantage in that schools aren't encouraging our girls to do the manual, the old manual type, um, manual arts type courses in high school. Again, we have educators directing where they think they should be. Mm -hmm. They don't have a white card. No one tells them to go out and get their white card before they start applying. They haven't done a cert one in general construction. They haven't gone out with their uncle on a job site every holiday because that opportunity wasn't given to them. Mm. Um, and these are all things that score highly in a recruitment process. Mm. So already they don't have, it's that old equality versus equity. We give everyone PPE um, and, and it's all the same PPE. If it doesn't fit properly, it's not going to protect you. Whereas if you tailor the PPE to a person's um, size and, and fits them well, then it's going to do its job. It's the same for, for women, we can't expect to put the same recruitment um, process in place and expect a, a, a young woman to have the same stepping stones that the, the male has had or an Indigenous person. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, it's the, the, the funnelling as a sort of a last resort for the boys is just so disingenuous to them too, yes. the point that you made. So it's like... You know, it's a double whammy. The, the, the girls aren't getting the opportunity yeah. and, many, and many boys have been sort of pushed down that avenue because supposedly academically they're not ticking up the boxes. It's, it's just too convenient for to, to say no to the girls yeah. and, okay, well, you know, yeah, off you go. You need to do a trade. And it's a disadvantage for our industry because um, anyone who's been on the tools know that maths is your every moment of your day. If, if that's something you're struggling with, don't do a trade. Yeah, back to your point about the broader conversation about men in positions without quotas. Um, yeah, you know, I've heard it said so regularly over the last one. A couple of weeks that don't tell me that every every man has got an, in a position based on merit. Yes. Uh, it's just it's a nonsense. I wrote an article recently where I just said, I, "Yeah, the system has never worked against me. No. Not for one day has the system worked against me." Yeah. Can, how many women could say that? You know. So, so yeah, you know, I think that's there's got to be honesty in this conversation yeah. if, if we if we're to go ahead. Um, and the construction industry is just a micro. It's just a reflection of 
I look at Parliament today and I look at the wider societal issues and the construction industry is, is epitomises all the good things about our, mm. our society, but it absolutely puts a shining light on all the problems we've got in such a stark way. Yes. Um, there, there's a lot of similarities. There's a lot of similarities. And I, please excuse me because I am talking about, you know, back 15, 20 years when I was on site. But I remember being on a site with a group of guys and we were fenced off on in the site and a young woman walked down the street and they were howling at the fence at her, howling, not calling out, just howling. And yet I went to lunch that same day with those guys in a shopping centre. Hundreds of girls were walking past. They didn't howl, they didn't do anything wrong, they sat there, they ate their lunch, they behaved in that society. And I think sometimes when I look at Parliament, it reminds me of that moment of having Parliament's almost like a pack mentality mm. because there is this, you know, unbalanced gender side there and that, that, that oh, I swear to you, often when I'm watching the news at night and I look at how they treat each other and, and the opposition, I, I recall that moment. So it's like, that's interesting, so they could flick a switch. Yes, it was like it was like that was the that was the feral. That's okay to behave like that here. Yeah. But, but fifteen minutes down the road, we realise we can't behave that way. Yeah. And then again, if we look at another female strength in that attention to detail, so if you've got a, a male and female working in a in, in a build, the female is going to be picking up the little mistakes. So another um, area where I got pigeonholed was I got put out on fix out all the time as a carpenter um, because my attention to detail was that good. They were always getting me to do that. Mind you, I preferred framing. I preferred to do a lot of the rougher work. But when you put me in inside fix out, I couldn't ignore a problem. I, I I wouldn't put something and leave it with a two mil gap. I couldn't do it. It's just... You know, so you, you have to have that. You, so you, you got fell onto somewhere because you were so female. good, so female, <laughs> and so good at it. But it was actually at your disadvantage because you wanted to be. Yeah, but in saying that, I'm just trying in terms of that defects and the issues that a lot of these companies have in going back and fixing things. If you had a diverse workforce, you would find that um, you know the the woman will take a little bit more of the time. And and then again, I'm sure there's people listening right now. You think, well, we don't have time. Time costs money. But so does defects and coming back to fix things that um, cost you a hell of a lot more money. So investing in, in a workforce that um, that is diverse and, and will focus on, on some of those strengths and, and bring those strengths to the workplace, you can only improve, make improvements. If, if, you, if, you're doing, if you're doing more at the front end, you're going to have less problems at the back that's end it. and the back end is the most expensive. Yes. You know, that's when the lawyers come to town um, yeah. um, to fix up problems which were absolutely caused by lack of supervision, lack of attention, yeah. you know, lack of programming, oversight, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. I know that in talking about preparing for this, we were, were talking about some of the good news in terms of the uptaking of apprenticeships. Yes. Can you just shed a bit of light on that? And I've got a bit of a view. <laughs> Construction Skills Queensland put out a report um, on International Women's Day where they've um, indicated that the uptake of apprenticeships has gone from 2.5% to 5%, so it's doubled. Um, and in particular in the regions, there's been an increase in uptake of apprenticeships. Um, which is good, but those numbers are so still so insignificant when um, compared to to the, the uh, apprenticeships taken up by guides. And then there's a retention That's issue. Yeah. Um, once well, it's one thing to get the girls there, and um, many of them, like I said, want to be there. They'll give it a really good crack. But even the t um, toughest girl struggles with some of the cultural issues, the bias, the pigeonholing, um, and then, of course, if she's ready to have a family, how do you return back to an industry that expects you to be on site at 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning when, you know, your childcare doesn't open until 6.30? Mm. It's near impossible. Mm. 
it's the it's it's so true. Um, yeah, look, one of the things that sort of when it comes down to the women's perspective in terms of driving change, um, I read an article the other day where uh, the CEO of a large construction company in New South Wales, so it's now called Robertson Co. Um, I forget what it was called before. Not 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 known to me personally, but but she's a, she's a female CEO, and. And uh, they do a lot of big jobs down in uh, in Sydney, and they they're redeveloping the Concord mm-hmm. Hospital. And um, she negotiated an EBA with the CFMEU, uh, basically for a five day week. Yeah. Um, boy, did she get whacked um, by a lot of the men in the industry. And it was just based on the fact, well, you've just signed up for something that nobody else in the industry can afford. It was, it was that sort of mm. whacking. Um, and and she came back and said, well, we'll publish the results. I'm very confident that we'll get the productivity yeah. gains out of it, you know, um, put aside all the prejudices you might have with EBAs, put aside the prejudices you might have with this big union. Yeah. I'm just trying to deliver something where the workforce has committed to do some things in return for that, you know, we, it's give and take. Uh, I'll publish the the the, um, the results. I just don't think that would have been the case if she'd been a male. Yeah. And I also don't think it'd been the case that Pitch. somebody would have been. She would have. Somebody would have been as brave to to take something which has got a bit of a troublesome sort of past in terms of mm-hmm. EBAs. You know, strong supporters, not supporters. I'm not saying one way or the other. Yeah. Um, but she just thought through the prism of I just want to. Happy, happy workforce, more productivity. I'll publish the results. Yes, but the whacking she got yeah. uh, was uh, was quite remarkable. Actually, it came from very, yeah, strongly male-dominated people who yeah. who just were just locked into the all the A's are bad and don't deal with that union. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just it just it's just reflective. Um, ask you a question. Sure. What's the worst bit of advice you've ever been given? Um, in terms of trying to, so not not on site, but in terms of trying to um, be a leader in um, more of the corporate and professional world. I've been told that I'm too passionate and too emotional and that I care about the staff too much and that I need to take that out of the equation. And um, I I did go into a role giving that a a bit of a go and it wasn't wasn't my authentic self um, and it was amongst the, the worst experiences of my career in terms of management and, and that. But um, so, yes, I find that I, um, in terms of advice, is anyone telling you to be different to who you are was probably the worst in, in terms of advice. And um, I, was, I was actually told that in a, because um, I was asking the question in, in a point in my career where, I should have been moving up quicker. I had taken some time out to have the um, to, to have children. Um, I was a leader within Nawik. I had taken this organisation that was, you know, having little events to having events that were making profits. I was making profits for Nawik, which um, in 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 not just sponsorship but getting um, contracts. We were building, we were sitting at the table with Queensland MPs, getting our voices heard. I was making this huge difference in an, in a volunteer capacity yet in a work um, paid role. Um, I was being sidelined and I, I couldn't quite and I was told that was my problem and it was probably a couple of years after where I decided that well if that is going to stop me then I don't want to progress because if I have to be that kind of person I don't want to progress so that was 
Yeah, yeah, it's, it's tough. I think, <laughs> yeah, I think it's really important for for particularly young women to to um, pick up on some of this stuff uh, as we go through these conversations. Uh, so that's why I'm going to ask everybody, <laughs> which is certainly in the foreseeable future will always be key um, women influencers like yourself in the industry. Um, what's the worst piece of advice? It's it's amazing. You know, it's like you think of. You know, Hillary Clinton had a shrill voice um, <laughs> and was called out by it. You know, it was like... <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. Well, if you look at what I just said and what I said earlier about not being... Um, about emulating the men, that was something that I did to protect myself when I was on site, um, but that wasn't being true to myself. I I am a, a woman who loves her shoes and <laughs> dresses and um, no, certainly no, love putting on a ball gown. <laughs> see why you got on with Janelle so well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and Janelle and I have an affiliation around shoes. Um, but that's not who was on, on site, you know, um, which, which is part of my regret. So um, I, I tell this story where I was um, in a training centre and all the apprentices and workers were coming into the cafeteria and I was watching this young girl who was a painter and she had her painter's whites on and paint everywhere and she had this gorgeous blonde hair which was put up nicely. She had a gold handbag. I've never been more envious of someone in a moment. Like she owned her femininity of who she was. Yeah, I'm a tradie. But I'm a, I'm a woman and I own it. And I, I was really, and she would have only just been out of school. She was very young. But I was, and, and then I was probably maybe about 35 when I saw that. So as a, as a mature woman, she inspired me to, to, to be myself, you know, um, that I didn't have to be someone else. It's a, it's, oh, we were talking about it before we came in. It's the same, you see that same uh, enthusiasm and that same sort of uh, reflection coming through the uh, women's football coats. Yes. You know, you can get on the football and just belt the juices out of each other. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't get off it and um, and and embrace all of those things yes. which you want to embrace. Yeah. If it's if it's if it's the shoes and whatever 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 you want to embrace. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have one doesn't shouldn't be at the expense of the other no. um, and um, yeah no it's 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 like I, in, in settling this these podcasts I, I was mentioned here before that I'm going to ask some of our young lawyer, female lawyers to just review the podcast and and um, reflect on what hits them in the face in terms of you know, something that that leaves them with an impression um, and for the so, so so my conversation around this point is very deliberate, is to try to drag out some stuff yep. that, that that people can just, particularly young women um, uh, who have got an interest in the industry, uh, can say, um, yeah, okay, well, I'm not going to do that. You know, that's why <laughs> that's why I ask the worst bit of advice. You know, <laughs> people ask the best bit of advice. I don't yep. think that's. That's not necessarily the thing that, that that's yeah. you know the thing that hits you in the face is hearing from you. What is yeah. and, and all the other people that I'll be interviewing? What's the worst bit of advice? Yeah. Well, unless there's anything you want to add to it um, to this conversation, I've, if please feel free. I, I love <laughs> I love talking to you. Thank you. No, that's okay. I think I'm I'm good. Thank you. Thank it's you. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> you get nervous doing this stuff, but you it's were, been a pleasure. You were great. Thank, um, you. thank you very much. Um, and uh, we'll publish this, and I'm sure we'll get um, a whole lot of interested responses. Um, so. <laughs> but, but thank you so much. It's it's been wonderful talking no about. No problem. It. Thank you. Hi, I'm Johanna, and I'm a law clerk at Helix Legal. I really enjoyed listening to this podcast. I found Red Miller's story so inspiring and I think these are exactly the kinds of conversations that we should be having and that we should be listening to and learning from. In general, as a woman, I can relate to feeling like I need to change the way that I worked and as Rad said, emulate men whenever I was in a male-dominated environment. So what struck me most when listening to this podcast was learning how prevalent that way of thinking is and just how counterproductive it is not just for women but for the industry like michael and rad said 
it's important to be authentic to yourself and true to yourself. And both men and women have different skills and different strengths that are equally important and valuable for the construction industry. So that's also why I think that what RAD and what Nalik are doing is so important by giving light to these issues and by giving people the tools and the training to help embrace diversity, we can create an environment where women and men can support each other and collaborate. And I think that's so important for building a safer, happier and overall better construction industry. I hope you enjoyed the podcast today. The information we discussed today was just that, information only. It is not specific advice. As you have heard me say many times before, I'm not a lawyer and none of what I say is legal advice. If you take action following something you heard today, it is important to make sure you get professional advice about your unique situation before you proceed, whether that advice be legal, financial, accounting, medical or other advice. Please reach out to the Helix team if you have any questions or if there's another topic you'd like explored. And if you know someone who might benefit from the show, remember to tell them about it or point them to our Instagram, Facebook or LinkedIn.